Hey guys, Josh again. We're going to do something a little different in this video. Um, instead of talking about the software, uh, we're going to be looking at doing a battery upgrade in one of the controllers. Now it's worth noting to start off with that you've probably seen other battery upgrades online and they all claim to be 2000 milliamps and double the life of your controller. They are all complete lies. Um, the battery packs they sell are just rebranded OEM uh, packs from usually the DualShock 3 which is actually even a lower milliamp rating so you're paying expecting to get double the life and you're really only getting about 800 milliamps compared to the uh, original 1000 milliamps of the batteries in the DualShock 4 so this is not that this is going to actually be a battery pack that we purchased online from a hobby store that has a guaranteed milliamp rating um, there's going to be a couple I mean it is a little larger. Uh, it's not inside the plastic case, which will, you know, help us fit it in there. Uh, it's just the naked cells wrapped, but it is still a little larger. And that's the other thing. You're not going to get a larger milliamp battery without also the battery itself physically being larger. So that's your first give off that those other uh, batteries are just lying to you. All right, we're going to start off here. Uh, the batteries will come uh, bare naked with no connectors or lead, or it'll have leads, um, but it won't have a connector. So your controller, you're going to need a JST-PH connector. Uh, I happen to have one here, so we're going to go ahead and trim that down because we don't want to have too much excess wire. And there is going to be some soldering involved here, so hopefully you have an iron heated up and you've done some soldering before. Now one important thing to note when you order your connector um, you're going to want to check it against your original battery. It just so happens the JST connectors that I'm using the red and black pins are swapped so I actually have to swap them around or solder them uh, the opposite colors I'm choosing to swap them around just so the colors remain correct I'm also going to be using some shrink tubing just to uh, seal it up once I'm done you can also use electrical tape or some other sort of tape but shrink tubing is just the most secure Alright, you go ahead and insert your shrink tubing over the leads, the longest section to keep them the farthest away from the heat. And then your actual connector is just going to be jammed right onto the end. Some people like to twist the wires together, but if you're soldering it actually works better if you just jam them right into each other and you let them kind of fray out a little bit and then squish it together. So we got the iron here heated up. Okay, I got a good overlap there, so we'll go ahead and tin our iron and then add some solder. Now you can see what I was talking about when I said shaky hands. Alright, you want to, the best way to solder is if you heat the wires and then add the solder to the wire. So you're not soldering directly with the iron onto the solder. The wires are actually acting as a conduit in between. Alright, that's our red side. And swap that up and we're going to hit our black cables here. Looks like a solid connection, so that should be the end of our soldering there. and slide the shrink tubing up to cover that up. All 
and then hit the shrink tubing up with a little bit of quick heat here. Notice I'm not using the actual tip of the iron. I don't want to actually burn the wires. And I'm going fairly quick fairly quickly over the surface for the same reason. The shrink tubing will react at a much lower heat and the actual wires will melt. Okay, so we got our battery connected together here. And now for the actual controller part. There's a million videos online on how to effectively take these controllers apart, so I'm not going to get into too much detail. Um, basically, you got your four screws on the back you're going to need to get out of there. It will be a little jarring opening this up. Uh, you'll have to apply a little more pressure than you might be comfortable with, but it'll come apart. Okay, so we don't have to dig too deep into the controller. The, uh, the battery level's on the first, uh, the first level of disassembly here, so we're going to go ahead and pull out our old battery. And here's the original one. You see it's encased in the plastic, which adds a couple millimeters on, which is why this not being encased in the plastic is actually going to be what's actually going to make it fit in here, uh, unlike if it was. All right. Now the other thing you're going to have to do is this plastic battery tray. It is not going to be able to stay in there. That just adds too much uh, too much depth onto the battery, so we're going to have to remove that. As soon as I find the flat-headed screwdriver on this thing, there we go. And there's two little tabs towards the top that you need to pop out in order to get that up. One on either side, and that's it. Simple as that. And just discard that. Okay. Now the only other thing is there are two plastic guide pins right in the middle, right here where my fingers are, that protrude up through the PCB. And those kind of poke the battery a little bit. for So, just to be safe, I'm going to cut them down just a tad. Um, probably not necessary, but I'm doing it just to be safe. And you're only it's, it only takes like a millimeter, if even that, off. All right. And the battery, uh, since we got rid of the battery tray, it's just going to kind of be in there loose. Uh, if you want, you can use some electrical tape to secure it into place. Um, but use it sparingly because you don't have much spare space to deal with in this controller. And this will just kind of help keep it from rattling around a little bit, though I doubt it would rattle around anyways because the back plate is going to be pushing up against it pretty snug. So we just reconnect our connector. Make sure the wire is routed away from anything that will pinch. Okay, so yesterday evening I plugged both controllers in. Um, I have one with the original battery and one with the battery mod. And I did that at about 5.08 p.m. Um, overnight last night, the battery, uh, the original battery controller, uh, died and cut out at about 2.20 a.m. And the other one the one with the new upgraded battery uh, is still going. It's actually now 6.20 a.m. and the one with the upgraded battery still has 50% remaining.
Okay, so here we are, not too long later, um, and the controller with the new upgraded battery has just died on us. So, that made it to about 7.16 a.m., and it's not too much longer after we looked at it and saw that it was at 60%, so obviously the, the voltage curve on the battery is not what the actual uh, voltage reading is expecting. Um, which is fine. It just means that the the controller is, you know, not tuned to put out a proper battery level for that kind of battery pack. But uh, everything seemed to work fine, and we did get a few extra hours out of it. Uh, the other one died at two, so we got an extra five hours out of this battery in idle time. So well worth the switch.